what's up guys we're going to give you guys an overview on the g35 build today we have been asked a bunch to get into the youtube side of things and we feel like time is now and we'll give you guys the breakdown of the build over the winter but first let's just start with where we're at right now we'll get this pig started she's dead and we'll get to it So unfortunately, we let it sit too long. This booster won't pick up the battery from zero volts. So I'm gonna get some cables. We'll pull the truck up and we'll jump it that way. Maybe, Let's see. There we go, okay. We're gonna give it a minute here, charge up, and then we will flash this thing up. So, we're resorting away from the jumper cables and we're gonna go back to the booster box. Hopefully there's enough of a charge in the battery now to pick it up. It doesn't usually wanna boost unless it's got like at least one to two volts in the battery and there was zero as you guys saw. She's been sitting a little while. So let's see if this works. Hope it works. They ran out of gas in my shop. Didn't even get to pull it out. So we're gonna get some gas. I'll take the TDI because this one's reliable. This one doesn't even die. It does plastic. Old trusty dusty. She ain't pretty, but it works. This car, what's the chances? But anyways, we had to go pick up a buddy. He wanted to come help um, work on one of their projects here. But So we're gonna go to a little, a little road trip, get some fuel, pick up a buddy, and then we'll be back and we'll give you this overview. Here we are. Serve the pig a little bit of 91. Not much because it's off the road anyway. But I think 7 Eleven is about as good as it's going to get today. Auto fill. That's a newer. She finally took the majority of it. Why body gets in the way to where you can't really lift the dirt all the way up, but I'll do, don't get I'll do. Back to this jumper box or booster. Okay. Magically go from 3.2. 11.2. Let's flash it up.
I can show you guys the car, the fuel issues and everything else. But we've got Sally is what we refer to her as. She's a 2006 Infiniti G35. At least that's what it started as. Uh, we've had it for, I want to say about four years. And we've been building slowly here and there and sometimes quicker than others because we get put in a situation where we want it to be showing and something's broken and we have to change it. But I'll give you guys a quick overview. We started with the spec D lights. <clears throat> These got the illuminating brow. They also do the turn signals through them. <clears throat> I love them, they're amazing. And then we've got a KBD bumper on it, just cause I wanted to go to the Nismo style front end cause it's got a built in lip. I think it looks really clean. <clears throat> and then we've got, this is just a, it was a carbon fiber grill, but the carbon fiber was just normal twill. I didn't like it against the honeycomb. So we just had it painted. And then we bought the Fly One Motorsports Slayer Honeycomb Carbon Hood, which is phenomenal. And I think it brings a whole lot of extra mean to the front end of these cars because they can be kind of a bubbly, kind of fun looking car. I wanted it to look aggressive. <clears throat> and you know, VQs do VQ things, so the VQ is no longer there. We six liter swapped it. It's got an LQ4 out of a 2500 Chevy. Somebody told me it wouldn't fit. It kind of became a watch this moment. It's got Thompson Motorsport 799 port and polished heads <clears throat> with oversized valves. Uh, we run Johnson Roller lifters with Kamali push rods. Uh, we've got a Texas Speed Cam in it. Can't remember the grind off the top of my head. It's been in there for a little while. I've swapped over to a four core uh, rad for it because we were fighting cooling issues. That's made by Grassroots Performance out of Ontario. It's great. We run two fans on it, a 12 on the front and a 12 on the back. <clears throat> Seems to be okay right now. And we'll just keep moving around here. We got fire. Fiberglass Mafia is the wide body kit we're running right now. The front. Fits really nice, I'm pretty happy with it. The wheels are a little bit ridiculous, but we've made it work. They're 12 by 13, five in the front. No, sorry, not 12, 19. 19 by 13, five. <clears throat> so you got seven inch lip on them and then whatever, the suit. As I keep being told, those gotta go, man. They just don't suit it. But this is chassis mounted right now, it's going. I don't need it anymore now that we're on the bags. We're on True Heart Airlift Suspension paired to uh, Airlift 3P management system that we've all customized. <clears throat> it's got Tiny Bot Snowstorm Blue on the body and then Tiny Bot Gloss Black on the roof. Dropped by us. <clears throat> Easy Splitters Mirror Covers. I know, I know. But they're honeycomb to match the hood and the trunk. I got their side splitters on it right now, which are clean, but the biggest issue I see with these side splitters is they're not as wide as the car, man. And like, that's something I do want to change. So we might be going to a custom uh, side splitter here so that we can keep the width of the car and then everything kind of flows. But that's for another video. The rear flare is fiberglass mafia too, but when we bought the wheels, we did a measurement, thought it would fit went to a size that nobody's ever done on the G35 before. So we're running 19 by 15 rears with a 345 Nitto switch stretched onto it. <clears throat> but they didn't fit. We rubbed and smoked almost blew a set of tires because it was rubbing on the tire. So what we had to do is we had this fender cut in half and then widened another two and a half inches on each side so that we could tuck these wheels. And to me, I really like the way that the rear is wider than the front. It gives it Nice thick hips and the overall finish of the way the kit looks on the car, I believe flows a little nicer. That's just my personal taste. Then we put the easy splitters rear diffuser on it. Um, it's been on for a couple years now. She's getting pretty thundered. So I think it's on the list to go. I don't know what I'm going to do there, but it'll be something that I build because I want to keep it the width of the car again. Nobody makes anything that's that wide unfortunately. And keeping the honeycomb theme, we went to TG Works. 
because they were the only ones I could find at the time who were making a nice big duck bill for the G35 in honeycomb. Honeycomb's the hard part. Once you start, you kind of got to keep the theme going and it makes it more expensive for one and a little bit harder to find your parts. You're a little restricted on what company you can use. <clears throat> but from there, we went into the trunk because I hated that it was stock and just a quick and dirty trunk setup that I had done in there. I've got a roll of this for you guys, but it's got the infinity mirror underneath the management. All the hard lines were bent by us. That was like, oh, but I'm really happy with the outcome. <clears throat> we, uh, we wrapped the floor to match the body just to kind of keep the theme rolling through. And overall, I think it's, it's really suiting of the car. We had reached out to a sponsor. This video is not sponsored, but the car, all the powder work was done by a shop called Calver Coatings out of Vernon. They're phenomenal. The wheels, the air tank, all the hard lines, everything. And there's we got more parts going into this winter just because they're great to deal with. And their attention to detail is something that you won't find anywhere else. <clears throat> so 10 out of 10, recommend looking into those guys if you're in the market for any powder work. We also had to do the tint, man. You can't just have a fish bowl. So this is Luminous Tints. Oh, what color is that? Amalite. Amalite, yeah. And I think, if I remember right, they used this car as a feature for their color, which was super cool. Didn't expect that to happen, but really kind of gave me like a pick me up. It was pretty neat. So ever since we did the LS, the rear tires have been an issue because we couldn't keep rubber on them. We kept turning the power up on the motor and kept spinning tires quicker and quicker. And these things are hard to find in a 345. So we ended up getting a set of NT triple five R2s with hunter tread wear. I think they call it a drag radial, but can't spin them. It's really displayed the torque that these LSs put, put out when you can actually put it down on the street and hook and man, it just sucks you into the seat and it is, it makes it a lot more fun. <clears throat> so we'll move on inside here. So the interior we tried to keep really clean. I'm not one for a loud and proud interior. I just like it all to flow. So we overlaid the center consoles and the door handles here in honeycomb carbon fiber to kind of pull that theme into the car without it being just uh, in your face. And then Calver Coatings did the shift knob to bring some yellow in here and kind of because that yellow kind of came out of nowhere when we dropped the wheels off I hadn't decided on a color and pretty much told them to surprise me so I love it absolutely love it but it needed to be throughout the whole car not just in one spot and I think it's a nice little accent in here we painted the <clears throat> little bezel right here that goes across the dash I'm sorry I know it's dirty but it is off season for us here it's got a grip roll steering wheel. This steering wheel has been with me for, I want to say just about nine years. And that speaks volumes because it's got no cracks. It's been driven hard. It's in great shape. So like some of the chrome's got a little bit of scuffing on it, but like we can polish it up and everything looks really nice. It kind of brings the sparkle theme because the wrap, if it was in the sun right now, does a full prism effect and so does the engine bay. I just I like how it kind of completed the look. And then we had to pair it with the Brides. By far my favorite seat. Bride Lomax with the gradient on it. The gradients on the doors. And we're hoping to kind of keep the theme of the gradient going through. And then we just tucked our air management up on the side here. Just to keep it out of the way. And not look like there's wires everywhere. And then I've, this is a 3D printed pod gauge or gauge gauge pods and we run a uh, oil pressure because on the first feet or ls that we put in we lost oil pressure and i didn't know ended up spinning a couple bearings because on these g35s all they got is dummy light for oil pressure and once that dummy light comes on it's too late 
So we put the AEM one in, so now we can actually see live what's happening. And if we see low oil pressure or whatever, we just shut her down before hopefully any damage happens. It hasn't happened with this motor. The six liter's been really good so far, and I'm loving it. But just in case. And then the same story with the the second gauge there. That's the temp for the motor for coolant, just to kind of keep an eye on it because we were fighting overheating. And every now and then, so if it's hot, well, it ba we battle it. But all in all. I think it's come together fairly good. We've got a lot of big plans for this winter and we're wanting to actually share them this year. We usually hold it secret until the summer and then we reveal the whole car, but I think we're gonna start a whole channel on the, the winter build and keep you guys in the loop on what's happening and maybe get some input on what you guys think should be next or what we could do a little different or better or we're always open to opinions and options here. With that said, I think we're going to get this big start again, drag it back into the shop, and the next video is going to be some teardown of getting everything ready to send to Calver for powder, getting the oil leak that we have on the motor that's been driving me nuts and haunting me for a bit of the season dealt with. I think it's an oil pan gasket, and just kind of start waking up and cleaning up the whole build here for you guys. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment if you have any input on something we should do a little different or a mod you'd like to see on the car. And we can just go from there. Look forward to it. Catch you guys on the next one.